Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and please comment and like below. Today I have one of the original members, forming members of Quiet Riot, Kelly Garney. How are you, Kelly? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I've wanted to speak with you for quite a while now. I've um, spoken with um, some of your friends, um, Randy Rhodes, uh, Kelly, and, and Kathy previously. Um, before we get into what I want to talk about, um, I know a lot of people would like to know, what are you doing these days? You're still in the music business. It looks like you've got a nice guitar up there. Um, I, I refer to myself as a reluctant musician, and I pretty much only play if I have to. Uh, or if something's interesting enough, I'll do that. I have something... Um, in September in Indiana, which is kind of close to you guys, uh, kind of. And that, that's going to be a, a big rock festival that's uh, put on by uh, people at a monastery, of all things. And uh, I get to stay at the monastery. I'll be out there six days. And um, it's going to be a pretty interesting show. There's going to be some real interesting bands. And I'll be there selling books. and. Uh, just uh, making a lot of friends and, and having a good time. Right on. I'll put links to everybody to uh, where everybody can go to purchase the books as well. I've yeah, got a called... question. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, it's called St. Meinrad, M-E-I-N-R-A-D, um, Rock Fest. And it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Looks like there's going to be, they told me there's usually between two and 3,000 people there. You know, it's a small town thing. And uh, and those are the kind of things I really like. So if I can do something like that, I'll, I'll do it, especially if I can travel and and uh, have sort of a mini vacation out of it. Uh, and I'll be up there uh, doing three songs, uh, doing West Coast Tryouts, Back to the Coast, and Killer Girls. Right on. Um... Otherwise. I just do my art, and that I'm an artist now, and that that's what I do. Photographer and an artist, I would think, right? Your photos? Yeah, I, not so much photography anymore. Just the other type of art I do, which is uh, made out of metal. Right, yeah, is, is, did you do that gun on your on your right? No, no, no I just bought that at, actually at a yard sale. Um, what I do for my art is I I go to I visit old old mines in. Uh, Nevada from the 1800s, and I just walk around them, and I find interesting things on the ground, little pieces of metal that have been there over 100 years, and uh, I bring them back home, and I create art out of them. That is amazing. Um, I wanted to talk to you primarily because of your Randy Rhodes connection, um, mm -hmm. and I've got a few interesting questions of my own that you would be able to answer. Now, force of habit... I've heard that song, and I do personally, like you've probably answered it in a multitude of interviews, but maybe my viewers haven't heard the answer. Do you do you believe that that song um, originally um, written and then slowly turned into Suicide Solution? Mm. Honestly, uh, I don't see I don't see too many comparisons. And by the way, uh, uh, that's that song was a song that me and Randy were doing way, way before Quiet Riot. We we wrote that long before Quiet Riot, and it was more like what we wanted to sound like. And and then when it came time to doing albums, uh, the, the management we had just said, "No, nah, that's that's a, that's a little bit too heavy." Because <laughs> you know this was disappointing to me and Randy. But uh, uh, so it was kind of scrap, but we, we had uh, worked up a demo of it. It was one of the when we got Kevin, it was one of the first songs that we uh, taught him because it, it was a song we were already doing. Yeah, it's actually a subtle reference for me because I listened to it a bunch of times and probably um, like you're alluding to, it's not straight out suicide solution it's not obvious but if you're a guitar player and you're a good listener like i found like where he would say 
too much coffee, that just little groove there. But somebody also commented they could even hear no bone movies in there. Like, I mean, that's just obvious from Randy's musical talents that a lot of the little songs would morph into, you know, full songs. Yeah. And uh, funny enough, no bone movies is uh, something we used to say. Well, no, we actually didn't say no to Bone movies because we like Bone movies. If I mean, you know, back then when we we're little kids, you know, if you saw something like that, it was it was fascinating or uh, something like, huh? Well, look at that. And uh, but but Bone movies is is to us was the same thing as Bone magazines. Uh, we would refer to girls that were very good looking as quite bonastic. Uh, it referred to the mostly nudity, uh, definitely porn, and nudity, and I'm talking like, you know, Playboy magazines and things like that that were around when we were kids. Yeah, like softcore. That's what they would call softcore now. Yeah. Um, now, growing up um, in that mega mecca of a time in the 80s and late 70s, Obviously, in um, the California scene, L.A. scene, you've seen many, many great musicians such as yourself and guitar players. Now, you played with Randy. Obviously, you know his talent. Is there a guitarist that you would say stands out that you think he wasn't that great, but everybody thought he was? Kind of a reverse question to what normal pe people would ask normally. Um. No, um, I thought everybody was pretty good. You know, I was biased and I felt, you know, Randy was the best that was out there. Uh, so, um, you know, I heard Eddie and I said, well, he's pretty good, you know. And I, I heard a lot of other guys playing on the strip back in those days. Uh, and and I said, yeah, I guess they're good, you know. And uh, but but none of them had the charisma of Randy, and that's what uh, overshadowed them. Right. Well, that's the thing. He well, the charisma is the one thing, but you'd have to um, argue the age and what he his success level in only two albums. Well, people generally would will think of Randy Rhodes as. The two albums from uh, Ozzy, Blizzard of Oz and Diver Madman, kind of made him who he was, but he was so young. So I think you're yeah. right about the yeah. charisma. And that's right, yes. He uh, uh, accomplished a lot on those two albums. Now, is there a song that you two wrote together that you would have thought you wished um, would have been album worthy that wasn't released on an album, but one of them that still sticks in the back of your head that you think, God, I wish we would have put that on vinyl. No, uh, nothing stands out as anything we were doing. You know, Force I Have It was the only one really that I, I said uh, should, you know, should go on something. Um, look in any window, we were doing that way, way before we ever met Kevin. And, um, and that did make it onto an album. So no complaints there. Um, and, um, West Coast tryouts was something we were doing way before Quiet Riot. And that made it onto albums. So, uh, I, I believe it was renamed Back to the Coast. And, um, yeah, so I mean, you know, some stuff we were doing before Quiet Riot actually made it on to the first two records that we did. Now, with um, the different people in and out of Quiet Riot, we know you, Randy, Kevin, Chuck, Frankie. There, there's been a, there's been a few. What, how do you look at things inside the industry as wondering? You know what? Is it? Uh, how do you say? Like foreigners, everybody but uh, but Luke. Do you look at Quiet Right the same vein, or do you think you know what? If C Carlos was in it with Rudy, then I think I would think Quiet Right. But do you know what I'm kind of saying as a fan? Well, 
you know, the, we, we live in an age of brands. Yeah. And bands have become brands. And there's lots of things you can sell with a brand. Yeah. Uh, and so that's basically how I see it. I don't care who's in what band. Um, I, I would, you know, I, I, me and my wife go to a lot of big shows. And, um, you know, I, I don't think, oh, none of these guys are the original guys, you know. I mean, things get in the way. I, I've been to see uh, Slaughter twice in the last six months. Uh, because Mark's a good friend of mine. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, Dana was always around, but, you know, he's got a new drummer. He's He's got a new guitar player. But, you know, things happen. You know, uh, the original guitar player in Slaughter, poor Tim Kelly, uh, passed away, which is sad because he was a hell of a nice guy. And he was a good player. And Bloss is... Elias is doing his own thing so you know you still have the slaughter brand you know everybody's got a logo and you can put it on something a t-shirt a hat whatever somebody gonna buy it that you make a great point that I, I brought up a few times in in the brand aspect you look at say Iron Maiden you look at Def Leppard and you wonder these guys don't need to tour for money and I'm sure that they'd like to spend more time with their families but in speaking with some of these people, it's understood that they keep the brand moving and so does management and money, but it's also, they've got employees to feed, like during C-19 and COVID, a lot of these guys felt bad, not for themselves, they weren't losing any houses, but their techs, their roadies, their management team, that's part of the brand. Yeah, right, exactly. So, um, I won't keep it too it's just long. Red, here. It's just musical Red Bull. You know, you do something with it. Uh, people come and see it. People buy it. So it, it's the same as any any uh, any big brand. Right. Um, do you still have um, contact with Kathy and Kelly? I'm sure you would do. Oh, yeah. I'll, every now and then, you know, whenever I need to. And... Uh, you know, we have to sometimes discuss some business. So, uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've been around that family since I was 11 years old. Of everybody I know, I've known them the longest. So how is the Randy Rhodes uh, vintage wine? Is it as fine as he was a guitar player? I don't understand the question. Well, his, the... Um, Sergenzio, um, Kathy. Oh, the wine. Uh, yeah, sorry. I don't really know any of the specifics about the wine. Um, oh, okay. I'm not a wine drinker. I'm a, I'm a Guinness drinker. And so okay. I've, I've never tasted Randy Rhodes wine. Okay. Well, I'll just guess that. I mean, I'm not a wine drinker either. I'm just going to guess it's, uh, it's as very fine as his guitar playing. I won't keep you too much longer. Just a few more moments. I'm gracious for your time. Um, this uh, show is based out of Canada, but most of my subscribers are American. Now, if I ask you a Canadian question, who would you say is your favorite Canadian musician? Who would it be? Or band? Well, I don't pay too much attention to who's from Canada. Um, uh I, I really couldn't even answer that question. You couldn't even say Rush or Loverboy is a good one? Well, I don't like Rush. <laughs> and uh, Loverboy is so cool. I got, they're cool. Yeah, I got the jam with the, uh, the guitar player, uh, Mike Reno, once. And he was a very nice guy. And they don't seem to get in any trouble with anybody. So... Oh, sure. Lover boy, you got it. I'll take lover boy. <laughs> Twisting your arm here, Kelly. Um, so, um, yeah, you got the show coming up. And so I, you, wrote, you wrote another book. Would this be your second one we're talking about earlier? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's completely unrelated to, to music. I spent 20 years as a photographer in Las Vegas. and. Um, 
I started out doing just uh, fashion type models and models getting local work in, in Las Vegas that they needed pictures for. And then with the advent of the internet, um, things kind of changed and all of a sudden my phone was ringing a lot and it seemed that all the local escorts in Las Vegas, of which we have probably over 10,000, um, they were needing pictures all of a sudden for the internet. So a lot of them started calling me. And it got to the point where I wasn't doing too many models anymore because the escorts were, were much more lucrative. They were a lot easier. Uh, they paid really good. They tipped. Fantastic. And um, and it was a really interesting time because I spent a lot of time talking to them because, and they were easy to talk to. They they were into getting to know somebody business. That was part of their business. So it was easy to strike up a conversation with them and and form a really quick friendship. Uh, many of which uh, last to this day from, gosh, you know, the early two thousands, uh, and. Um, so I heard a, a lot of interesting stories. Um, I used to ask these girls, you know, just out of curiosity, you know, what's the, what's the weirdest thing some guy ever asked you to do? And, and they'd tell me and I'd go, oh, my God, you know. And I heard some just outrageous stories um, that were, you know, kind of not what you think. Um, right. The way that that some guys, you know, got their thrills, uh, you know, was sort of not exactly sexual. So these stories were were very interesting. So the give, book is give kind me, of about give me that a, time. Give me a G-rated version of one of the most the weirdest things you've heard. No thanks. <laughs> By the book, Can't, there's no. Oh, it's in the book. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, yeah, I, um, you know, I. I it's not that I don't, I don't want to give away the contents of a book. I don't want to tell yeah. a story, you know, of that nature. Um, Good point. Know, in in a, a public forum like this. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now yeah. you're in Nevada. Um, it's funny thing is I have another channel. I uh, I uh, about Art Bell, the talk show host. What now? I'm. What? I have a show where I talk about Art Bell, the talk show host out of Pahrump. He's passed away now. but I knew Art Bell very well. You knew him personally? Yeah, I worked with him a lot. Wow. Can I ask in what in what demographic you would be working with a talk show host? Is it uh, well, communications, Art, radio? As Art Bell proved, you know, he was very interesting, uh, interested in radio. And uh, that came from uh, a very keen interest in ham radio. Yes. And I worked for a man who had a real lot of money, and he was real into ham radio. And so me and this man uh, set about setting up the ultimate ham station where, you know, tons of radios and eventually antennas uh, had to be built, Lar pretty large antennas. Uh, I'm talking like 80 feet tall. And uh, he met, uh, the man met Art Bell somehow, and Art Bell was interested in all this ham radio stuff we were doing. Because we, we were kind of, for, for that uh, hobby or whatever you want to call it, we were doing some groundbreaking things. Like, for instance, we would... Um, he would buy an antenna and it would come in sections. And then there's a, a mountain um, just outside of Las Vegas called uh, Mount Potosi. And there's a lot of uh, equipment up there for, for broadcasting. So if you wanted to put up an antenna, you put it up there because they had a, a metal shack that housed all the electronics to power the antennas. And so he was able to get uh, permission to put an antenna up there. So a couple of antennas. So what we had to do 
was we had to drive the antenna sections out to the desert and tie them up in a big pile. And then a helicopter would come by and hover and we would tie the, um, the sections to the bottom of the helicopter. And then we uh, got on the uh, helicopter and he flew us up to the top of Mount Potosai, which uh, incidentally is the same mountain that uh, many, many, many years ago, uh, Carol Lombard uh, plane flew into and she died. Oh, and no. you can still see wreckage of the plane up there. It's very remote. Uh, I think you might be able to get there if you were to take a car, but it would have to be a hell of a vehicle. You pretty much got to go in by chopper. And so we we put in three antennas up there, and then we had to wire them into this building. And, uh, you know, it was kind of hairy work, you know, but Art Bell didn't have anything to do with that. That was me and another guy. Well, I take that back. I think he went on one of those expeditions. But uh, this guy also had an 80-foot antenna at his house, which had multiple uh, bandwidth antennas on it. And Art Bell was around like every day uh, working on that because he was the only one with balls enough to climb up to the top of the 80-foot tower, which I said, nope, don't care how much you're paying me. I ain't going up there. And uh, so, uh, so that's how I got to know Art. That is awesome because that he's one of my passions in what I listen to at night to sleep. It, you wouldn't be talking about Bob Crane, would you? Because he used to I don't he used know to have Bob Crane is. Well, Art used to advertise Bob Crane radios on his show all the time. But uh wow. No, this is an interesting segue. I'm a big fan of arts and um I'll let you go now because you've been gracious with your time. I'd like to maybe do a part two next year. Um, what's the yeah. opposite of unsubscribe, Kelly? Uh, subscribe, I suppose. <laughs> hey, everybody do as Kelly Garney says and subscribe to the channel for these great, unique interviews. We got some good stuff out of Kelly. Um, he's not a fan of Rush, but he's a fan of arts. And I appreciate your time, my friend. All right, no problem. It was nice talking to you, and goodbye, everybody. I hope to see you in St. Meinrad, Indiana, June to, uh, uh, September 27th and 28th. Perfect. We'll put links below. Take care, my friend. Okay.